All right, so Wednesday afternoon. I don't think I have missed a night working hardly, except for when I was sick, since last Monday. I think I've worked every single day and every single night since like last Monday. So we're well over a week into this. Um, I cheated a little. You see, we got headers, we got mid plate. So me and Harper come out here earlier before she went to bed and we cleaned up, we swept up, we straightened some stuff up. We mopped the headers up on the engine, and I'll show you that. Uh, we slipped the engine in the car. We figured out how low we can go back down with these headers and how high we need to lift the mid plate from how high everything used to be, basically. Um, I had told y'all when we first started this journey of changing over to turbo that I felt like I needed to lift the motor four to five inches. The measurement ended up coming in at 1.5 inches. So one and a half inches is how high we we're lifting the motor compared to where it was. This is gonna keep everything like that's already done wise, drive shaft, all that stuff. All that stuff can be adjusted. That's not a big deal. Um, you know, but if you go too far out of whack, it just makes things harder per se. Uh, so th I think this is a really good number that we ended up falling with, 1.5. These headers are amazing. Let me show you them, and I'm going to tell you where I got them from. All right, so the company that we got these from is BL Fabrications, right here across the bottom of the screen. They are out of Florida, Tampa, Florida. So huge shout out to BL Fabrications. Um, I'm absolutely in love with these things. Uh, these things came in at under 1500 bucks. I did buy them on Black Friday. I don't know if price was affected by Black Friday or not. It didn't necessarily say that there was a sale or anything. So um, I'm not 100% sure, but they came in under 1500 bucks um, decently. Um, man, I think it was like maybe under 1200 bucks. Uh, I'll put the price at the bottom of the screen right here. Don't remember it off the top of my head, but amazing 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 compared to where we were sitting at you recall we had huge issues with them turning around here and dumping uh all the other issue all the headers you find barn built um everywhere a lot of barn built headers out of it there's multiple companies that do the turbo headers for the coyote not a ton like the ls but there's multiple ones with nice v bands and everything the only issue is price on some of them get pretty pricey uh some of them just come straight out forward facing um you know all different setups these i absolutely freaking love these because they come up here near the valve covers okay so this completely opens me up to all of my engine plate and mid plate so your engine plate uh was bolted up to here i'll have to see if this clears the one i had which i built custom i mean i can build another one no issue at all but this opens up all of this area right here versus some of the companies that come straight off of here and come down kind of like right here um it just opens up all the real estate in the world straight shot to the starter i'm in freaking love <laughs> if you know how if you know where we come from the struggle on the starter um so this is just amazing man and then from here you can take your um 90 if you want or your curve and you can come down here and wrap it down here and be perfectly fine you can go up you can go straight you can go wherever you need uh to go with these things and you know have all the real estate in the world plenty of rooms to take the head uh, uh, valve covers off i mean just top notch real nice clark top notch um they're pretty much mirrored left to right they pretty much uh come out the same way i mean just smooth flowing tubes you know not too sharp of bends or anything just uh overall great man. um so what i've done is i've come on here and now this is where of course, nothing goes 100% smooth. So you get headers that are just absolutely freaking amazing for your application. Uh, they clear the freaking um, steering column perfect. I mean, they clear everything perfect. It's so freaking cool. But moving this thing up inch and a half um, kind of puts me in a predicament where I can't just do exactly what I want to do. I wanted to move these bottom holes just up. So put the bottom hole in the top holes and then just add a uh, a tab to the top hole. However, of course, in true nature, when I built this car, I did not think about the importance of everything being equal left to right. So I don't think my holes, let me see here. They might be, it's one inch off the bottom. That's one inch. No, they are the same. Okay, so that's one inch and four inches. 
and then this one is one inches and three inches so that's what it is this side is one inch difference uh because there was less material to work with i don't remember if i took this out it looks like i did take this out i don't know why um or not but so my bottom holes are going to be the same off of the bottom of the plate but the top holes are not so now i basically have to figure out what to do about um you know moving it up let's see here if we move up the small side which is gonna be on this side so the holes they are spread out two inches so it might be easiest for me just to go up two inches versus an inch and a half and just straight up move the bottom hole up to that one and then up two inches on that one the only thing is then let's see here if we move up two inches on that four inches no yeah we would have enough room we would technically have enough room right there to punch another hole in that and then um be good to go so we're gonna have to put it up there though and lay it out basically i have to now figure out how do i get this thing back into the car and um do it in a timely manner that's as fast as possible so sometimes it helps to just sit and think for a second versus rushing right into it uh because you know as i have explained we want to stay on that same plane up and down wise we don't want to go forward and backwards we don't want to have to re-square it up in the chassis we don't want to do none of that so that's the reason why we kind of just want to re-bolt to the same tabs we had that keeps our angle that keeps our alignment that keeps everything and then just add an independent tab um, up top so that's what i'm about to work on um, another issue with this engine plate is that uh ever since this thing was new this is i think from mmr I believe it is um it has some spring out to it so whenever you if you take it off and you just put it in loose like right now just put it in there loose then what actually happens is when you go to set the engine in you can't get it in you can't get the dowel pins in uh because it actually spreads open so you actually have to pry this side just a little bit to get the dowel pins in and then once it's clamped in really tight then you never uh you won't have to worry about it again in the future uh but that's a little disappointing on this one is how it does have a little bit of spring uh spring open to it that's that's a little bit disappointing i thought about drilling these out um so that you know you could just put it in there loose and making sure all the holes are opened up some of these holes have already been opened up in here some of them are off centered as you can see that right there uh, you can see where i drew around it to have to take a drill bit and shift some of these holes uh, so right out the box from mmr even the starter uh, we did this on youtube a long time ago uh, we had issues with the starter wanting to fit in there we had a handful of issues that we had to address with this uh, motor plate to make it work but once you get it clamped in there really tight against the frame, then you'll never have issues again. Everything is smooth selling from there on out. Uh, it's just now, we, since we're resetting it, we have to get it all back in there. All right, so there's what we end up with. Um, and like I said, on that side over there, that hole to hole spread in the aluminum mid plate is two inches. So taking it from the bottom hole in the uh, chassis mount and moving it up to the top hole in chassis mount moves everything up two inches and then on this side over here what i did was i put the mid plate back in the car like it was uh when we started you know originally and i looked in reference to where the bottom of this mid plate was to the bottom of this tab right here now the bottom of this tab is a little bit crooked but there's a little nick in the metal in the dead center of this tab and that touches flush with the bottom of that uh, mid plate so all i did was reference from where that mid plate bottom right there touches that chassis tab which is the center of that chassis tab and then i simply went up from that same reference point up to the bottom of this two inches so that moves this side up two inches because we have the bolt holes as an alignment and we know center to center is two inches and then this side, we don't have a bolt hole in here, so we have to reference something. So again, we just moved it up two inches. So that's moving the whole mid plate up two inches. To get my spread right, I just happened to have some of these dowels laying around that literally were a snug fit. I had to just lightly tap them in with a hammer 
and then I had to pry this mid plate in just a little to get it to go in the bell housing and then just simply clamp everything together. And what that does is that gives me my correct spread because when you drill this hole, you wanna go ahead and pretty much drill it where your spread is. That way you don't have nothing moving around really. Now, if you, if you have that hole a little bigger and you tighten the piss out of this thing, it's probably not going nowhere but I'd rather do it as precise as possible. And then if I have to drill it out a little bigger, I will, but I like to try to be precise right out the gate as much as I can. Um, so we squished the mid plate, made sure we're tight to our bell housing all the way around. So that's important in my situation because of the mid plate spring open. So we wanna make sure we're squished up tight. Uh, we took the uh, vice grips and I, I just lazy, I don't want to tighten the bolt up, but we made sure we squished our mid plate tight to our bracket because that is going to set our, like, our, you know, like this, you know, um, the transmission's already uh, just sitting there. It just went straight up. So it hasn't been rolled or anything and, you know, nothing, nothing like that should be affected. So all we have to do is um, now just simply make some tabs for the top. So uh, now that I see where, we're, where we need to be at, we will take the mid plate back out the car again, because this was just mock up to get me an idea of exactly what we need. And we will grind the paint um, on here. Well, first we'll go ahead and mark our hole. So we're gonna use the same size drill bit to mark center. And then we will pull it out. We'll drill that hole, because I don't wanna drill it with the aluminum mid plate in there. And, waller out the mid plate hole so we'll take mid plate out drill that hole in the chassis tab and then grind the paint on both sides um, of the chassis up in that area so that we could put the mid plate back in the car this time run bolts through it and then we can weld our tabs then what we should be able to do is we know that we raised the front up two inches so the back should also come up two inches so we ended up not having to go quite as high as we thought we were. That's good. So a lot of good news tonight. Uh, we don't have to mess with our floor pedals or nothing like that. We don't have to cut anything out of this side over here, the floor structure around my foot. So we can keep all that. Uh, and then, you know, once we get this done, now we know the height of our transmission. Uh, we can do our back mount spacers and then we can literally start working on the inside of the car also and building the firewall and getting all that stuff uh, buttoned up. So let's uh, try to make a little bit of progress with this. Also, one more quick noticing note in case anybody caught it. Yes, my mid plate goes on the back side of my tabs, not on the front side. That's how it was not, uh, that's how it was set up. I purposely did it on the front side so I can mark this hole. Um, and then I can easily, when I bolt it back in, move it to the back side. All right, look at that. So we used a makeshift uh, socket that measured out two inches to space that up right there. So it's just sitting there. It measures like two inches and half of a sixteenth. 30 seconds, I guess that would be. Um, we're gonna get these pieces made. I guess I'm gonna uh, hit up Uncle Mike and that way they can be cut precisely versus me cutting them with a cutoff wheel. These are really thick, heavy duty pieces. Uh, we'll get them machined down to two inches for our spacer. Uh, that way we don't have to build that crossbar over again right now. It'll save us some time. And uh, we have no jacks underneath it no more. So the transmission is back on its own weight. Um, we have the mid plate clamped uh, to the tabs, but we have some nuts on there just for safety. And so the bolts are um, aligning it, but you can see the bolts don't have um, tension on them. They're loose, so them things are perfect. That is perfect right there where it's at because you don't have to fight with um, you know, alignment or getting them, getting in. There's nothing worse than having a thread in a bolt because alignment is so tight. We got our dowels back in. So all of our holes in our transmission line back up. None of the mid plate is getting in the way. That one's a little tight, but uh, it's aluminum. So it will go same as all of them. Uh, this mid plate's always been, you know, a little on the tight side, but it goes. So, uh, that is uh, that is making progress in my in my opinion. So now I gotta build some funky tabs. So I went ahead and grinded all this out. So whatever I come up with, I can put them in place. But unfortunately, my bolt hole is lower than the edge of the frame rail. So I've gotta build like some L-shaped 
uh, tabs pretty much because I don't want to, uh, they're not really gonna weld to the face. I mean, I could weld some of it to the face. I grinded the top of this, you know, right here the best I could. I guess I could scratch the rest of that off, uh, but it still probably needs to be like some kind of L-shaped tab. I wish that I would have made these tabs a little higher because and spaced my holes out a little bit more because then I would have had it uh, perfect on this one. But um, yeah, so next step, build some tabs. All right, so a little arts and crafts uh, with cardboard. Dude, I go to the pantry. I don't know about y'all, but when you're just doing little stuff like this, man, just run to the uh, pantry and cornbread mix. I didn't need any of that, but uh, run to the pantry and grab you some scrap boxes to build them out of. Because you just sit here with scissors and just make your templates. That way you can then transfer it to metal. So that's how that little tab is going to look. We're going to weld it in all the way across the top of the frame rail and then all the way up this side on this one. And uh, then we'll punch the hole through it and uh, drill it exactly where it needs to be. I don't ever normally make my hole in my template because of how stuff can change, you know, the thickness of your cutoff wheel or whatever. So I'll cut this out of metal first, then put it up there, then mark my hole, and I'll probably drill that hole on the bench. Um, and then I'll put the bolt through it, and then I'll weld it in exactly where it needs to be at. Uh, but that gets me to the bench on that side. And then on this side, we're gonna go uh, like this. So this one's gonna be a little bit different, but that's because the frame rails on this car are not symmetrical left or right. And uh, I didn't, gr I can't grind all the way over there. Like I don't wanna take all this apart to get all the way up in there. And I don't think it's uh, needed. So we should be perfectly fine. So on this one, we'll burn it in all the way across the top of the frame rail and down. And then on both of them, we'll also burn it in to the tab to connect them together. So uh, should be plenty, plenty freaking strong. Um, shouldn't go nowhere at all. Shoot for a while. John, on his motor plates, if you watch his most recent video, he only had one bolt uh, on left and right holding the whole motor in on the front. So I am uh, should be perfectly fine. But yeah, there's our things. All we got to do is transfer these down to metal and get them cut and then burn them bad boys in. All right, we got all of our pieces welded in. So, uh, man, I'm getting a lot better. But there was still a lot of trash in these, like especially around this hole right here that I couldn't get cleaned out. But you can see the bolt goes in and out smooth. Uh, and that bolt, that hole right there is perfect size, perfect half inch uh, for that. And then we went ahead and uh, welded it together right there, which again, it was a little bit of paint that it picked up. So it uh, kind of boogered up. But that tab shouldn't go nowhere. And then this tab's even better. But again, over here in the corner where the seam is, there was some paint and trash got into it. But everything else is uh, pretty decent. Uh, I'm. I consider that decent enough for me. I don't know what everybody else would think. Uh, but again, the bolt goes in and out of that thing uh, perfectly. So we definitely got to get some paint on this because boy, is that not acceptable at all uh, how it looks right now. But uh, that's pretty freaking cool, y'all, because now we are done with um, the mid plate. So all we need to do now is go ahead and slip this mid plate back out one more time, put the jack underneath there, slip it out one more time, and go ahead and brush this out, paint this. And then we can dive our motor back in, and then we can bolt up uh, the two bolts across the top to the motor, two bolts across the bottom to the motor. That will sandwich it tight, put our spacers in the back, so we'll get them, I'll drop them off with Mike tomorrow, and get uh, them cut down precisely, or find out if he knows somebody and bolt that up and then once the transmission is hard mounted and the motor is hard mounted to it then we can start working on our uh strut towers hopefully this weekend and through bars and uh get our front plates our motor plates uh set up where we can bolt the motor actually back in the car so make sure you are subscribed make sure you smash that note bell or that uh, not bell, but smash the bell button for me if you're subscribed that will let you know every time we upload. I've been trying hard for one video a day. It's a lot of work on my end to work my job, plus work on the car, plus film what we're doing on the car, plus edit what we filmed, plus upload it, get it out, do the thumbnail, do the description, do everything else that goes on the YouTube side. It is a ton of freaking work uh, to do, but so far we've been on a freaking roll. Um, now that the transmission is mounted, 
once we get the motor mounted, now we're gonna be able to jump back and forth from the interior to the exterior, you know, as we get stuff and really hopefully be able to make progress pretty freaking fast. Uh, I gotta order some more parts tonight, order the V-bands for the headers, and man, we're gonna be mounting a turbo really soon, and I'm gonna show y'all what we picked up. Thanks, y'all.